I hosted a workshop this January at Christie's for the Wintertour students. Uh, we examined an Aaron Willard tall case clock made about 1800 in Boston. So I'm going to turn it over to someone more energetic about clocks. <laughs> I have just put together the Aaron Willard over here, so people who want to be wander into the other room. What I'd like to convey to you today, and we spoke a little bit uh, uh, previously about clocks in general, but um, the fact that I look at clocks as pieces of furniture, even though I'm a clock specialist, to me, their furniture, you know, some of the best furniture made in federal America uh, can be found in the form of clock cases. Um, keep in mind that these were very wealthy people that were, that were buying them, so the cabinet makers uh, very often put forth their best effort. Um, so at the time that this clock was made, perhaps 10 or 15 percent of the people in this country owned a clock of any kind. So it was for very wealthy people. Uh, so I look, I look at them as pieces of furniture, as cases. Um, what I'd like to do is, is show you how to safely take apart a clock. And I know a lot of, a lot of people are afraid of them. Uh, and I want to convey the fact that you don't have to be afraid of them. They're not going to hurt you. You just have to do it the correct way. And some of you will end up being curators, and I don't want you to be curators that are afraid of clocks, and there are many of them out there. So um, the first thing you want to do if, if, if you want to examine a clock like this is, is to look inside and see if it's got its weights and pendulum on it. Uh, if the weights and the pendulum are on, that means the works are stable. The weight of this will hold that in place. If the weights and pendulum are not on it, then this can actually tip forward when you take the hood off. So that's something to keep in mind. So if the, if the weights and the pendulum are not on it, you want two people to take the, the clock apart. So uh, if Darren will step in for a minute, assuming that these were not on the clock, you need one person to, to carefully slide the hood out and another person to reach inside and stabilize the works by putting the hand on what we call the saddle board. I'll show you that when we, when we get it taken apart. So we'll pretend that the weights and pendulum are not on. And, and I always just sort of work the, the hood out a little bit. It's very often sticky. It can be difficult to, to take out. You don't want to grab it by the columns to take it off because they're not always secured properly. If you're not tall enough to reach up and, and grab it by the molding, just check the column, make sure it's solid, and then you can do it this way with one hand underneath and one hand on the column. I can reach almost all of them, so, <laughs> so I do it this way. And you just wiggle it back and forth a little bit, and my assistant is going to reach in and put his hand on the saddle board to, to uh, steady it. And as you're sliding it off, you just want to look and be sure that the back of the hood is not going to catch on the dial and make it tip forward. In this case, it clears it properly, so I just slide it off. <laughs> okay. So, now we've, uh, we've got the hood off, and let's say you want to move this clock from, from one room to another, one, one place to another. Um, one thing to consider is that the cords that the weights hang on, sometimes they're made of brass, and when you take the weights off, they can get tangled inside the, the movement. So it's a good idea to take a piece of, of tape and put it over the uh, over the cable as it uh, as it runs on the drum, or in a in a museum setting, you would probably put a uh, a clamp of some sort on the cables underneath to hold them in place so that they can't they can't get tangled. But in a situation like this, it's not uh, it's not a, a museum. Uh, if, if I'm moving the clock from one place to another, I'll temporarily put some tape on the cables and take it off as soon as I as soon as I get there. So. Um, these are uh, uh, cords. They're not going to. They're not going to tend to tangle up. So first thing I do is just unhook the weights. They always have hooks on them. They come right off. I then slide the slide the works back. If it's sometimes they're sitting forward, I slide it back a little bit to to stabilize it, and then reach in and unhook the pendulum carefully slide it 
straight down, keeping a hand on the saddle board. And again, if you have a second person to help you, so keep a hand here to stabilize it, that's good. The pendulum I'll just put inside. And this, we, we lift it out by holding the dial and the saddle board. Put my fingers underneath it and try to hold the whole thing together. Sometimes the, the, uh, the movement is not firmly attached to the saddle board. This one I checked it, it is. So that's what the movement looks like. This is a standard eight day uh, movement. It's, a, it's an Aaron Willard from Boston. This is what uh, movements from this period, they all look very similar or most of them look very similar. And uh, this is an imported English dial clock dates from uh, right around 1800, a little bit after. So, and then the moon, the revolving moon disc. Um, and when we're looking at one of these clocks for originality to determine if, uh, if, it, if it's all appropriate, um, it's important that this piece, this is called the saddle board, this is what, uh, what he was stabilizing as I took the hood off. It's important that this be original and that any holes that are in the saddle board line up with holes in the, in the mounts. Uh, if they don't, it can indicate that it's a marriage. The works in the case don't go together. That's a tremendous negative. Um, also, when we're looking for originality, we look at, at whatever the saddle board rests on. Uh, we want that to be unaltered. We don't want to have uh, shims or new strips of wood here. We don't want these sides to be replaced. Again, it can indicate that the works on the case are married together. So, let's take a look at the, at the hood. One of the problem areas for tall clocks, federal tall clocks, is the fretwork. Or if it's a clock made in the mid-Atlantic region where they would have a scroll pediment, the, the tops of the scrolls are prone to be sawn off, broken off, um, but in the, in the case of, of a New England clock with, with fretwork, the fretwork does not survive on most of them. I would say more than half have replaced fretwork or missing fretwork. So when we're examining this, we want to look for consistent oxidation on the back of it uh, and, and just the natural signs of age that, uh, that you would expect to find. In this instance, it, it has wonderful natural oxidation. It is the original fretwork. We also look at the form. It's the correct form for an Aaron Willard clock. So that's a, that's a good fretwork. Uh, and the finials as well. I'd like to lay the case over and, and uh, show you the feet as well. Important part of the clock that is often replaced would be the feet. Um, again, maybe, maybe half of the clocks from this period have their, their original feet. So if you, uh, if you come in a little bit closer, what we're looking for, again, natural oxidation. We don't want this to be, to be stained or colored. We don't want it to be new looking. Uh, it's very common to have some repairs to the feet, but you want them to be largely original. So here we have some breaks. You can see the, the cracks. This is clearly a replaced glue block because it would have been shaped to follow the, the back foot, as is that. It's an old glue block, but it would have been it would have been shaped. So these are basically the original feet, missing some glue blocks, some added. Uh, some repaired brakes. Typical fare. This is what you usually get. It is acceptable. I mean, there are some purists that would not buy this clock because it has some repairs, but this is really what is expected. This is what you, what you typically get. So, uh, another thing that, that you look for in these clocks, very often the, the base panels are cracked because it's such a, uh, a wide piece of wood that they, uh, they very often have repaired cracks and sometimes they've been replaced uh, because they had a, a nasty crack somewhere along the line they, they ended up replacing this board. 
So uh, just some of the things to look for, but please don't be afraid of clocks. They're not gonna hurt you. Uh, particularly if you have if you have someone to help you.